Hello everybody, Matt McDonald here again with the Kindle Fire Phone running Google so or with the Google Play Store. Now I am here because I have downloaded some benchmarking apps. I wanted to show you just how uh, well this phone runs. I'm going to run Antutu, I'm going to run Geek Be Geekbench 3, and then I'm going to run a speed test on T-Mobile's LTE network. So I'll start off with the quickest, the quickest one, which is um, the speed test. So I've got the speed test by Ookla. I am, as you can see, I'm on LTE on T-Mobile. I'm at 73%. To give you an idea, and I only have four bars of service, but three bars of service, but still, T-Mobile LTE is pretty decent in my area. So, and this phone works very well on on T-Mobile. This is a little bit of a disappointing score with only two bars of service, but uh, it's because I'm inside my house. But still, it's it. The LTE here is not bad at all. This just shows that you get 4G speeds on T-Mobile's network on this phone. Now I also get HSPA Plus on this phone for those of you who know what that is. Oh, look at upload speed, not bad at all. <clears throat> not bad at all. I usually actually get around 10 megabits down, but for some reason, wherever I'm sitting is not very conducive for this test. Okay, there she is. 3.1 mega, 3.14 megabits down and 8.55 megabits up. That's not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna close some apps. This is the uh, Yahoo AV8 launcher for those of you who don't, don't know. I try to get rid of all these real quick. Um, so it doesn't affect the, the benchmarking. And I am going to do, I'm going to run Geekbench 3 now. Except run benchmarks. While this is running, this phone has a Snapdragon 800 processor, which is a quad core. I think it's clocked at 2.2 gigahertz. Has 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of storage. Um, phone has a 13 megapixel main camera and I believe a 2 megapixel front-facing camera. Um, it doesn't have any buttons except for one on the front, and then it has the typical volume controls and the 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 uh, that has a Firefly button and. Um, the unlock button. So it scored an 893 on single core and 2680 on multi core. That is not a bad score at all. Not a bad score at all. In fact, it scored much better than the uh, the octa core Vivo Air that I just reviewed. Okay, that shows it's a Qualcomm 2.15 gigahertz processor. Has four cores. It's running on Android 4.2.2. Um, wow, not bad at all. Shows the. Uh, um, that's the memory speed. That is not a bad score at all. Wow, I'm very impressed. Okay, so that's the. Uh, only, it's only showing 1.65 gigabytes of memory for some reason, but it actually has two gigabytes. Anyways, that's the that's the Geekbench score. So I'll swipe up to go back. Now let's run Antutu, which is kind of the more um, comprehensive test. This will do ga a lot more um, graphics tests. phone has a 720p display and it has four front facing camera actually five these four though are for what they call dynamic perspective I turned it off essentially just rotates the icons as you rotate the screen so it looks like they're 3d kind of a dumb feature in my opinion not really utilized very well and expensive adds a lot of expense to the hardware but doesn't really offer a lot of value to the end user so I've turned that off yeah. it might be good for hackers to figure out how to use it better maybe get nice 3D images, but until they do that, I don't think it's going to be very useful or very popular. It's just a battery eater. The battery life on this phone is also very good. I'm at 71%. I've had it at church for three hours. Um, so 
had it on for about a third of that time. I just checked the on-screen time. It's about an hour and ten minutes. Considering I only charged it to 95%, that's very good. It means it'll get between four and five hours of on-screen time. And one, th one thing that contributes to that is it has kind of a lower resolution screen. Um, and it's kind of a bigger, heavier phone, so I think they put a bigger battery in it. And it doesn't have... You know, it doesn't have a ton of pixels to be pushing to the screen all the time, so that could save you a little, saves a little bit of battery life. And then turning off the dynamic perspective also saves a lot of battery life. And then I have all my themes set to black, because black consumes the least amount of power, as opposed to the other colors. The screen is very crisp and clear, and I feel like this is a really premium device. It's too bad that Amazon didn't do very well in their in the market. I've always been a, a big fan. And I'm running on T-Mobile's uh, network. There's that 720p, 720p display. Turn it 30 frames a second right now. I'll turn it sideways for you. Turn it 27 frames, 25. It's going down to 30, oh, 33. Wow, it's going up at 25. Forty frames a second, forty-five frames a second, forty-nine frames a second. It's really cooking at the end of this benchmark. My little girl just woke up, so hopefully I don't have to cut this video short. Oh, there we go, hundred percent, forty-one thousand five hundred. That scores very well, even almost up to the Galaxy S5, just a little bit below the Note 4 and the OnePlus One, and that's because this phone does not have a high-resolution screen, and so everything feels very fast. Um, it is very fast. It's a very good phone. It's a very good value if you can get the things that you need on it. Just double check to make sure that you get the apps that you need and you'll have no problem with this phone. Anyways, that's my review. Take it for what's worth. Thank you.